Anchors up, sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing pretty well, Jared. How are you doing today? We're doing pretty good over here. Uh, it's a new tradition. It's a good tradition. That one was uh, explosive. This is a this is a new one for me. This is a Parsons North Malsberry. I'm, ne- I'm never in true Sloopcast fashion. I'm not sure. Saison, I think is how you pronounce that. I could be mistaken as uh, we mispronounce things on this show. That's what we do. That's just what we do here. Kyle, we're doing something special today. Um, we're, we're like in the heart of the wasteland. In fact, um, this is when the athletic season ends and, and therefore also begins. Um, as Kyle was pointing out to me, um, the day we release this episode, in fact, is the day that the Pac-12 teams officially join the Big Ten. Uh, I believe all of the sports are like there's no sports active at Ohio State right now, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I, I think Gene Smith is now officially out. Um this, this is the turnover of the Ohio State, or not the Ohio State, the collegiate athletic season. At least the day we're releasing this. Um, we're, we're a day ahead of you guys. But we thought it would be fun to take a look at some of the sports that aren't football, that aren't basketball. If you do not know this, there are 36 official intercollegiate sports at Ohio State. Last I looked, last I looked, that's the most of any athletic department in the country. I although that knowledge is a couple years old, maybe someone has caught up by now, but the last I looked that was the most of anyone in the country. 36, Kyle. We're going to take a look. Now, we're, we're going to we're, we're do an overview of, like, everything. Very brief overview. Then we're going to take a look at two teams in a little more detail. Awesome. What do you think about that? Yeah, sounds good. But before you do that, Jared, why don't you, um, what am I? Why don't you do share I? your screen here? And we'll <laughs> oh, in the Discord? Yeah. Well. Uh, everyone appears to be busy tonight anyway, so it's all right. Um, there we go. There we go. All right. All right so where, where, where should we start? Um, well, I'm going to leave that up to you, Kyle. Where, where would you like to start? 36 sports, oh. 36. Uh, and that, that, that means 30, uh, quick maths, 33 of them aren't football or basketball. Well, uh, I guess let, let, let's start. So let's we, start we don't need to talk teams. about, we don't need to talk about those. Well, let's, let's start with the, uh, I'll just say the, um, the shining jewel of the 23-24 Ohio State Athletics. Well, I guess, I guess there, there, there's a couple. There, there, but there's a few, there's a few. There's a couple. Um, the women's ice hockey. Women's okay. Hockey. Let's, let's let's start off with that. Second national title in in three years. Sure. Uh, this is the team was, you're going to deep dive first. later in the show. Yes. Yeah. It was just a little. Yeah. It was just a little shy of making it back to back to back years. But hey, two out of three years is pretty darn good as well. Absolutely. Uh, the baseball team went 500. Sort of a a medium year for them. Um, cross country didn't do anything, um, especially special, um, the, the fencing team won the, uh, central collegiate fencing championships. So that's cool. And then placed sixth nationally, which, which, Hey, that ain't bad. That ain't bad. Uh, the women's cross country did a, a, a at least a bit better finishing fifth in the big 10 
and the uh, going back to fencing, but this time on the women's side, uh, they placed second in the uh, Central Collegiate Fencing Championships and 10th overall in the NCAA. Not not a bad finish. Not a bad finish. No, not 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 at all. I'm just looking. I'm just looking at some other highlights. Highlights here. Um, I mean, if we're going for highlights, um, we had a national champion in wrestling. Um, yes. The the overall team finished. Yeah, the overall team finished eighth in the country, uh, but. Okay. Jesse, Jesse, Jesse Mendez uh, did win an individual national championships uh, championship um, and 11 Warriors uh, released a top. I actually forget what the number was. Um, a, uh, a a top. Uh, I have 36. the site here. 36. Hmm. Uh, top 36. And he, uh, athletes for Ohio State in the calendar year, um, Jesse Mendez finished second on that list behind Marvin Harrison Jr. Mm -hmm. Yeah, first, the first Ohio State wrestler to win um, a national championship since 2018. Seems like a long time, especially with the success Ohio State has had. We had a good run there for a minute. Mm Mm-hmm. We had a really good run there for a minute. Um, but, you know, got Jesse Mendez maybe bringing some glory back to Columbus. Um, the swimming and diving team uh, finished second in the Big Ten, 13th in the NCAA. Uh, a men's diver named Lyle Yost finished fifth on that 11 Warriors list. Um Kyle, how'd your track and field people do? I know you're a big track and field guy. <laughs> uh, disappointing. <laughs> disappointing. Disappointing at all. I mean, they, they didn't even crack. Um, or they got fourth in the indoor, the men's, but 10th in outdoor and the women's weren't much better. They got ninth in indoor. They did, did get third in the Big Ten, but that's 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 about it. It's, to, to be fair, it's all of... All of those placements you're talking about were within the Big Ten. Yes. Those those weren't national placements. Yep. Uh, I will be talking in more detail about the tennis squad later in the show, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time there, but they were also a uh, big standout uh, performer uh, this last calendar year for Ohio State, gymnastics had about a 500 season. Golf finished seventh nationally. That's not a bad finish. Uh, lacrosse had a losing season. Um, soccer went, well, that's uh, an unfortunate uh, win-loss tie. They went 6-6-6. Six, six, and six. We'll just move forward from that. We won't, we won't spend too much time on that. Um, the men's volleyball. Men's volleyball made it all the way to the NCAA quarterfinals, finishing 22 and nine on the season. I think that's all the men's teams, obviously football and basketball. We're not going to spend any time on this episode. But the tennis, the tennis well, t- was a little, was a little disappointing. We're going to talk right? about, I, I got the tennis later in the show. That's, that's the tennis is my, we're going detail on tennis later in the show. Kyle's going to do ho- uh, women's hockey a little bit later in the show. I'm going to do men's tennis squad a little bit later in the show. Uh, so we don't got to spend much time on those right now. But yeah, just just looking just looking overall, it's just Kyle, I would say if you want disappointing. If you want disappointing, the synchronized swimming squad placed fourth. Now, here at Ohio State, we expect to win the synchronized swimming every single year. Mm -hmm. The Ohio State synchronized swimming squad is one of the most dominant programs in the country. We've talked about this before. So you're a longtime listener to the Sloopcast. You know this is not a joke. You know that Ohio State is first, first and foremost a synchronized swimming school. I'm not even kidding. It is 
one of the most dominant programs in all of college athletics. Now, Kyle, the President's Cup was recently released. Ohio State plays 15th, which isn't great. And then I found out, Kyle, when I say I found out, it's because you told me. I found out that synchronized swimming is not officially recognized by the President's Cup. And quite frankly, I'm calling shenanigans. This feels like a deliberate decision to hold down Ohio State and to delegitimize the grand sport of synchronized swimming. And if you're delegitimizing synchronized swimming, you're doing it just to hate Ohio State. These are facts. I don't know why you're shaking your head, Kyle. I don't know why you're doing that disapproving look that you do. These are straight facts. No, I'm, I'm just shaking my head about like why, why they would not include it. Like we, Jared and I were looking at these, saw that Ohio State got 15th overall in the, uh, in the Director's Cup um, final standings for the 23-24 collegiate season here. And yeah, it was really just, dis- yeah, just surprising about how, how many programs or how many uh, sports are not included in it. Including? So including synchronized swimming. Um, by the way, Ohio State synchronized swimming has 34 national titles. 34 national titles. That's insane. Just saying. Yeah, because I was looking at the list here, Jared. <clears throat> and so, yeah, it's, I, I just, I just laugh because even though secret eye swimming isn't on it, but beach volleyball is. Hey, they're both Olympic sports. Like I, I don't listen. If they're going to be water polo is, if they're going to be, how, who are you? The NCAA to say rowing, that rowing. Who are you to suggest that you can declare a sport illegitimate that the Olympics has declared legitimate? It's no wonder why it's no wonder why Stanford always wins, always either wins or is always near the top there because they, they're the one of the few teams or a few schools that has beach volleyball and rowing, which they always score high on. <laughs> well, Ohio State does have rowing as well, but. Anyway, um, what sports haven't we mentioned yet, Kyle? Um, uh, let's see. Oh, pistol. Kyle, we haven't. Yeah, we haven't mentioned the pistol squad yet. Um, fourth consecutive, Kyle. Fourth consecutive NCAA title. This is, uh, this is this is the biggest program that we're not going to deep dive today. We basically we had. I I sent Kyle a message before. We started researching the show and I essentially said, well, we have three teams we can choose to deep dive. We have the men's tennis team, the women's hockey team, and then the pistol team, which if you don't know is a co-ed team. Um, There's there's no separating the men's and the women's in the pistol because, hey, why not? You know, the pistol's doing most of the most of the athletic stuff. I'm kidding. Um, Again, on that 11 Warriors list, number fourth was Caitlin uh, how would you pronounce that last name, Kyle? Ablin? Ablin? Ablin or Ablin? Ablin? I'd say Ablin. Ablin? So probably wrong. Probably. Um, uh, placed fourth on that list. She played, placed fourth on that list. Um, Rifle's also a co-ed sport. Um, they placed fifth. Uh, and apparently, I, I here's the thing. 
I was trying to find out because it's it's widely publicized. Ohio State has 36 teams, um, 36 intercollegiate programs. Um, I was having a hard time figuring out what the 36th one was. Like I was trying to figure it out, and I think it's I think the Spirit program, which would be the, the cheerleaders. Um, I believe they technically are the 36th. I believe. Women's volleyball, uh, sub 500 year. Um, we talked about uh, women's tennis had uh, a had an okay year, not as good as the men's tennis squad, but they uh, made it to the second round of the NCAA's. Um, swimming and diving on the women's side, they went to six and zero, finished second in the Big Ten and ninth in the NCAA. That's a good showing by the women swimming and diving. Um, softball had um okay year. Um, they went about five hundred in the Big Ten. Um, women's soccer went um, I did did a little bit better than the men's for sure. Um, about the same. In terms well, of points, it's about the same. Okay. Um, gymnastics, women's gymnastics went six and two, um, and made it to the regional finals of the NCAA. Um, golf, women's golf went, uh, finished sixth in the NCAA regionals field hockey, um, went, uh, 500 in the big 10, made it to the big 10 semifinals. And Kyle, I think that's all 36 sports. Did I mention, did we mention all 36 sports? Yeah, that is all 36. Okay. I wanted to make sure I wanted to make sure to at least mention all of them. That was one of my goals for this episode was to at least mention all of them. We didn't talk about football and basketball. Well, I did mention that we weren't going to talk about them. What what about the women's basketball? I mean, we said football and basketball are publicized. The the, the point of this show is to not talk about them. Um, The women had an oak. I mean, the women had a pretty good regular season, but only made it to the round of 32 in the NCAA championships. Um, In my opinion, in my opinion, that's a little disappointment with the talent that they had there only making it for sure round of 32. I agree. Could, could have, could have been a, um, at a minimum, a, an elite eight, um, team here, but, but yeah. Yeah. Um, men's football, um, hoping to win a national championship this year, last year, uh, a little, little disappointing in the way it finished, but a very talented team. Um, and, uh, the basketball coach is fired. So that tells you how that season went. All right, Kyle, we're going to do a quick ad break. Then we're going to come back and then Kyle's going to tell us a little bit more about the women's hockey team. And I'm going to try and ask some helpful questions along the way. And, uh, you can avoid this upcoming ad if you, uh, join the Patreon, uh, patreon.thesloopcast.com for as little as $3 a month. You can help support this podcast. And hey, you get some benefits too, including getting an ad free version of the show for your podcast feed or for your uh, podcast feed without ads for your podcast app. That's a little bit more correct. Uh, so yeah, you can you can do that again at patreon.thesloopcast.com for as little as $3 a month. Here's that ad break now. Okay, Kyle, let's hear about that women's hockey team. Yeah, um, as I mentioned before, this is second national title in, in three years. Um, finish, finish the regular season um, 35 and four. Sorry, I lost track of my notes here. 35 and four, 26 and two in the in conference here. About to Big Ten, but it's a, not the Big Ten in, in hockey here. It is not, um, not, not women's hockey yeah, anyway, men, men's yeah, hockey yeah. did get, they did make a, okay, go ahead. Yeah. Just, did, just looking at this, looking at the schedule here. Yeah, they did. 
yeah, they they started off they started off with a loss to um, Colgate, which is one of the the best, one of the better uh, hockey teams, women hockey teams uh, in the country. But then they followed up with a with a win uh, the day after they lost to them. But then went on a big old win win streak with um, until they came up to Wisconsin at the end of the year, where they lost to Wisconsin at the end of the year and lost to them in the the um, the conference finals. But then we we all saw we all saw it at the national championship where we saw Ohio State get their revenge against Wisconsin in a 1-0 fashion to claim their second national title in three years. I have a question for you, Kyle. Mm-hmm. What Big Ten teams, so the, the women play in the WCHA conference for women's hockey. What Big Ten teams are also in this conference? What other Big Ten teams? Well, um, yeah. Wisconsin. I, uh-huh. There's, and, uh huh. And I'm, I'll tell you, there's one more. It's Minnesota. It, it is Minnesota. Um, the the uh, WCHA, which is the Western Collegiate Hockey Association, also features St. Cloud State, St. Thomas, um, Minnesota Duluth, and Ben Midgey State. <laughs> I've literally never heard of this university. B E M I D J I. It is in Minnesota. Shocking. And I believe that I, I believe that's a beaver. Um, that, uh, yeah, they, they are in fact the beavers. So six, in case anyone was curious, six of the eight schools are in the state of Minnesota. <laughs> God, I love hockey. Just, 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 just want to point that out there. I love hockey so much. <laughs> who are some of the standout stars kyle on that uh ohio state women's soccer ho- soccer I, I i soccer <laughs> soccer and hockey i almost said soccer hockey women's hockey team um yeah so i i think there there's a there's a few here you can you can go with um one of their best defenders um uh, Kayla Barnes um yeah. actually was a second team all american first team all conference honors as well in the um, thumbnail in the thumbnail yes uh you could also um you could also say uh Hannah Billick um who was the Buckeyes leading scorer uh 22 goals and 26 assists for the season and as well as um, Reagan Kirk, who was one of the um, best goalkeepers um, in, um, in this year's, uh, in this year. And shout out, made a shout out in the uh, national title. I mean, you couldn't, couldn't ask for anything better than a shout out. Yeah. Um, Bilka. If I'm pronouncing her name right, I'm sure I'm not, um, was the number four overall pick in the uh, professional women's hockey league draft. Uh, Barnes was the fifth overall pick, and then Kirk was the 42nd overall pick. So, huge talent on that team. Huge, huge talent on that team. Mm-hmm. Not, not only Jared was that um, 42nd pick, but that was, you can call that one the, um, um, well, that, that was the final pick of the draft too. Ah. How many, I, I, I'm, I listen, I'm, I'm going to own up to something. I don't know a lot about the PWHL. I don't either. 
I don't this, either. This, this might come as a shock to some of you. Um, I'm not super familiar with the, uh, with the professional, uh, uh, professional hockey, uh, women's league, um, hockey league, oh. professional women's hockey yeah. league. There are How six. many teams? There are six, six teams, mm-hmm. Toronto, Montreal, Minnesota, Boston, Ottawa, and New York. Of course, Minnesota has a team. Of course. Of course. Why doesn't Columbus? I think is my question. And half, half of this, half of the, half of the teams are in Canada. That's, that's fine. I'm, I'm, I am <laughs> so cool with that. I am so cool with that. Kyle, what else you got to tell us about this women's hockey team? Um, something interesting as I was looking through the through the team here. Did you know, Jared? In this probably not in this uh, in this roster here, only one was in the state of Ohio from the state of Ohio. Huh. So good on the recruiting, I suppose. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. A lot, a lot of, a lot of people, as you can imagine, from Minnesota, from Canada, uh, um, a few up in Michigan as well. Heck, even, even, even one, one Jared in Texas. That's a little, little surprising to, to hear. They do they have yeah. ice in Texas? <laughs> yeah. Uh. More, more, more on the draft. By the way, I found a, I found a complete list. Mm-hmm. Um, Jen, uh, Jen Gardner was selected by Montreal, the number eleventh pick. Um, the nineteenth overall pick. Um was Gabby Rosenthal to New York. Um, Stephanie Markowski, the number 20 overall pick to Ottawa. And uh, Lauren Bernard, the number 24 overall pick to Toronto. So that is six... Buckeyes taken in the first 24 picks. No, excuse me. That's five. No, no. I was right the first time. Six. You're right. Good six. Hey, Kyle, though, not done yet. Uh, Hadley Hartmetz uh, was the number 40 pick to Toronto. Uh, As you pointed out, um, Reagan Kirk was the number 42 pick. So that is eight Buckeyes of 42 picks. Eight of them were Ohio state players. Awesome. That's kind of insane. (laughs) That is, that is almost one out of every five. Almost. That is almost 20%. I'm not going to try and do the math beyond that live on the podcast, but that is almost 20% of the players in that draft were Ohio State Buckeyes. That is dominance. (laughs) That is utter dominance. Utter and complete dominance. I think that's, I think that's about it that I had on the, on the, on the, uh, on the hockey team here. So Um, I I was just, I was just looking at if there was anything, anything else I I missed here. Um, Oh, um, the, the head coach, uh, Nadine, um, was the uh, conference coach of the year. Oh, and since I was talking about that 11 warriors, um, thing, the, where they listed the top 
athletes of the calendar year. Uh, three of the top 10, which were Kirk, Bilka, and Barnes, all placed in the top 10. Uh, in that order, 10, 9, 8. All placed. Uh, Makina Webster placed 12th. And I'm scrolling up through the list to see if there's any additional women's hockey players on the list. And I think that's it. That's yeah, that's it. All right. All right. Um, before Jared talks about the tennis team, we're going to take one quick ad break here. Um, and we'll be be right back and Jared will be talking about the men's tennis team. Woohoo. And we're back. We didn't really go anywhere. Didn't really go anywhere, but we are back. The men's tennis team, Kyle. Had a really good year. Um there, so there are had a fantastic year. There there are two different titles. There's two uh different titles you can win. I believe tennis has basically two seasons. Um, There's the indoor season and the outdoor season. Um, Ohio State won the national title in the 2024 indoor championships. Um, They defeated TCU in the final round. Um, In the outdoor championships, however... Uh, they would unfortunately lose to TCU in the semifinals. Um, it was very competitive. TCU had an excellent squad, just didn't quite deliver. Um, it was actually only the second loss of the entire season for Ohio State as a squad. Um, they finished the year 34 and two. They actually went into that tournament as the number one seed. And just lost a very competitive round of tennis to TCU in Fort. Well, not a round of tennis, but you know what I mean. Um, they came into the, like I said, into the tennis uh, tournament as the number one overall seed. They four and owed Cleveland State. Um, they four and one Oklahoma State. They four and one Mississippi State. They beat Columbia four to two. Uh, and then, like I said, just unfortunately came up short against TCU, who, like I said, they they defeated for the indoor. So they traded one. Uh, TCU went on to defeat Texas in the championship and and win the, the championship. Uh, Texas was the number two seed. So congrats to TCU for taking down the number one and the number two seeds on on the way to their their championship. Um The uh, you have on this squad a well, what's the way to say this, Kyle? I was, I almost said individual champions, but I guess they're actually doubles champions in wrestling. You, your track and field, you'd say an individual national champions, but this was this is for uh, duos in tennis. Uh, JJ Tracy and Robert Clash, excuse me, Cash, no L in there. JJ Tracy and Robert Cash um, won the NCAA doubles championship. And this is for the second consecutive season that they did this. Um, Additionally, um, they will be rewarded uh, a main draw wild card for this summer's U S open. Oh, wow. Wow. So they have an opportunity to go compete against the world's best at the U S open, which is wild and cool. Um, yeah. Second consecutive national championship for those two. Um, cash finished his career with the most doubles wins in programs history. Um, Tracy had a remarkable final season at Ohio state. Um, his combined record for the entire year was 77 and 12. Wow. Um, it's impressive. Very impressive. He 
earned singles All-American honors and doubles All-American honors. Double. Yeah. Um, he is a Powell, Ohio native, and he finishes his career at Ohio State with 235 career victories. Um, JJ Tracy was named, uh, the Ohio state athlete of the year, um, along with women's basketballer, JC Sheldon, uh, an amazing accomplishment, um, all around. I mean, there That's were no great. shortage, no shortage of great athletes at Ohio state this last year. Um, on the Ohio State, or excuse me, on the 11 Warriors list, J.J. Tracy finished third overall in uh, on the Ohio State athletes list. Um, Robert Cash, who's doubles partner, finished 13th. And additional men's tennis player Jack Anthrop uh, placed 14th. Like I said, incredible uh, amount of talent overall for the um for the tennis squad um jj tracy like i said uh will be i believe uh finishing up his career at ohio state um he had an incredible career um i mean as a freshman he was 26 and three in singles matches as a freshman, which is insane. Um, uh, he uh, also went uh, this season, went 40 and four in singles, 37 and eight in doubles. Um, Uh, first team, I already said that regular season, uh, big 10 regular season and tournament champions and the semifinals of the NCAA competition, uh, as a, uh, as a single, um, excuse me, no trace, uh, quarterfinals in the NCAA men's singles competition, reading this directly from 11 warriors. Uh, Tracy then made a run to the quarterfinals in the NCAA singles men's competition before uh, teaming up with Cash to cap his uh, college career with an NCAA doubles championship. Um, yeah, I, you know, it's it's fun when you dive into this stuff and you find people you haven't really heard of before and you sort of learn about their impact at Ohio State Um Kyle mentioned a whole host of amazing women playing on the tennis team. Uh, it's fun learning about JJ Tracy um, and as well, Robert Cash, uh, who had amazing careers at Ohio State. Um, yeah, it's I, I really enjoyed researching this episode. Um, yeah, th these were this is this was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I'm I'm having I'm having I'm having a lot of fun doing this. Um that's all I'm trying to say, I think. Um he also uh academic all Big Ten. JJ Tracy was. Um I don't know if that's out yet for the 24 season, but he did for 22 and 23. Um I assume he did or will for 24 as well. I'm not hundred percent. Um yeah. Kyle, I, I think that's what I have for the tennis squad. Um, do you have anything else that you want to bring up? No, I mean other than just other other than just those few sports. A lot, lot of I'll, I'll just say it. A lot of just just middle of the road teams. Sure. From from, from what from um from the results that we've gotten here um, could have been better depending on how the women's basketball team could have done um, how uh, the wrestling could have done better than eighth place uh, being night 15 and 15 and two in the regular season or, but 
but it, it is what it is though. Yeah. Um, since we have a, a few extra minutes here, um, again, I'm probably going to mispronounce her name, but Caitlin and, and please, cause I know you're very good with a pistol. My apologies, Caitlin. Um, Caitlin Ablin, uh, pistol, uh, best pistol shooter on the Ohio state squad. Um, she won her second consecutive, uh, individual aggregate national championship this year. Um, I'm reading this directly from 11 warriors, by the way, she also won the individual titles in both the sport and standard pistol categories while finishing second in air pistol to lead the Buckeyes to their fourth straight team title in convincing fashion. That's I'm just, I'm just, you know, a lot, you know, there's a lot of greatness. Kyle points out there's a lot of mediocrity this year and he's not wrong. But there's a lot of greatness mixed in here as well. A five-time All-American. Yeah. <laughs> That's absolutely insane. That is. Uh, all right, Kyle, any, anything else you want to toss in or should we wrap this one up? Um, I think, I think that, I think that's it here. Um, it's kind of the calm before the storm here. There's, Ohio State was red hot, red hot in in um in the recruiting. Um, they did they did get a uh, four star commit in um, Trajan Odom, Huge. as well as the as well as the in state tight end uh, Brody Lennon. Is this Kyle's corner, at, by the way? Yes, over at Gates Mills. Uh, just just this past week here, Ohio State just went on a on a tear. Oh, and, and, um, as well, I forgot, uh, how can I forget about, uh, Zion Grady, one of a top hundred prospect as well. Uh, red, red, hot June for, for Ohio state football recruiting. Red except, hot. except, except some bad news, some bad recruiting news. Dorian, Dorian Brew. Brew. Yeah. I mean, Dorian Brew is a guy who we've had penciled into the class for a very long time. Um, he committed to Oregon this past week, unfortunately. Uh, I will say, keep an eye on this recruitment. I'm not, I'm not counting Ohio state out yet is, is my take on that right now. Um, That's it. That's, that's my entire take on that for the moment. Um, I don't know. Are, are you, you know, there's a lot of good. Um, there's a lot of good. There's, you get this one piece of bad, which is the last piece of news. We news we've gotten in, in the recruiting lineup. So it hurts. Also Dorian Bruce, uh, even though he's been in Texas, he has Ohio roots um, it's, it's hard to convince the number four cornerback in the country to come play for you when you have the number one and number two cornerback on the squad. Un un the unfortunate situation you look at right now, however, is like what happens if, cause like what happens if offered flips? Mm hmm. And in a weird way, I think it does kind of help that Ohio State has picked up a second player from the state of Alabama. Um, maybe that helps keep offered on board. Maybe it doesn't. And I don't know. It's. If you can get offered to stay and if you can get, if you can get Zion Grady, who's the other, who's now the second guy from Alabama to stay in the class and hell, if you can go out and get Autry to join as well, 
who's an incredibly talented defensive tackle. You can go get Autry to come, and that's three Alabama guys in the class. Maybe that helps keep all three of them in the class. Mm-hmm. I don't remember the last time Ohio State played a pay, pulled a great player. I don't know if it's ever happened in the modern recruiting era that Ohio State's pulled a top flight player from the state of Alabama. And now they're going to do three. And I, and I say all of this to say, what do you do if Brew doesn't come here because Offord's here? And then what happens if Offord's not here? Can you then turn around and go flip Brew back? Or has Offord's presence cost you both Offord and Brew? Or maybe yeah, that has nothing to do with it. Yeah, I'm not sure. We still got still got quite a ways. We still got we do five and a half months before the first the early signing day period comes up. So 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 a lot of time here. I mean, I yeah, it sucks hearing about Dorian Brew right now, but I wouldn't count Ohio State out just yet. No, 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 no. I I would not either. That's that recruitment is not over. Yeah, that recruitment is not over. Just, just keep an eye, keep an eye on Dorian Brew. Still, don't, don't freak out. Don't freak out. Nobody freak out. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody it. freak out. No, that's it. That's that's all I got. That's all I got for today. Okay. Um, tonight's ending music. I don't know, Kyle. What should we do tonight? What should we play tonight? What do you think? Oh. I get I did I forgot to line I, something up. I don't know. That's <laughs> um I don't know, you, you know more about the local bands than I do. Yeah, that's probably fair. Um Let's go ahead and do a let's do a harbor song. Let's do harbor. Um, harbor is a band from Columbus. They are a lot of fun. You should go see them live. Uh, it is spelled H A H A R B O U R. Harbor. Uh, like I said, they're from Columbus, and you should go check them out if you're in Columbus. Download the app Bands in Town on your phone and just keep an eye on who's playing where and when. Uh, make sure to join our Patreon at patreon.thesloopcast.com. Buy a t-shirt at 7071.thesloopcast.com for like general Ohio merchandise. And if you want some podcast merchandise that is suggest Ohio State stuff, but legally is not. You can check that out at merch.thesloopcast.com. And what is something else I should be plugging, Kyle? The Discord. Discord.thesloopcast.com. Come come talk football with us. We are both very active in the Discord server. Discord.thesloopcast.com. YouTube.thesloopcast.com. Um, RSS.thepodcast.com. Or thesloopcast.com. Uh, That's all I got. All right. That's the end of today's show. Uh, Ending once again with a band by the name of Harbor. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support local podcasters. Once again, this is Harbor.